Good afternoon, my name is Ralph Friedrichs and welcome to Take Your Life Back. Today we're going to talk about what the Bible says about alcohol and alcoholism. We always talk about what other people say, but this is coming directly from the Bible and I did get this information from two separate sources. The uh, more important source would be from uh, verses from the Bible itself and Christian scientif uh, scientists or scientific or whatever. It's called Christian scientific, I believe. Uh, but first, I just want to give a shout out to Dr. Luis Gonzalez at 844-414-8444. And his website is www.startingpointpointmn.com. That's startingpoint.com. What he has is two entities. The first entity is where he'll walk you from your addiction to your recovery. He is the liaison. He is the addiction recovery coach. He is not a counselor or a therapist. He does not want to talk about your past. He wants to talk about today, 24 hours at a time, and start working on your uh, future for tomorrow. He also has the coaching on the other side um, to turn you into a coach if you possess the personality, the passion, and the professionalism and you have some sort of experience with addiction, whether it being your own or a loved one, meaning that you were helping another person. You could have even been a sponsor, uh, possibly at AA. Um, so reach out to him, 844-414-8444, that's Dr. Luis Gonzalez over at startingpointmn.com. You can also reach out to me at uh, clearviews.info, what my website is, my first website, because I do have two, my first website is an informational website, that is clearviews.info, that's C-L-E-A-R-V-I-E-W-S dot I-N-F-O. Like I said, it's all pure uh, information. I have over, I believe now it's 115 videos total. They're not all on that particular website. There's probably about 80 something on there. But what you have is articles and newspaper clippings and uh, other videos from doctors, uh, psychiatrists and psychologists. They are the clinically, uh, uh, the clinical people that dispense this information. I merely just post it on my website for your information so that you can educate yourself on whether it's your own addiction or other people's addiction. You can also go to www.clearreform.com That's C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M.com Now clearreform.com is uh, for uh, where I am a uh, master addiction recovery coach like Dr. Luis Gonzalez and where I will walk you from your addiction to your recovery. I, like Dr. Luis Gonzalez, don't care. Uh, to talk about your past because it's immaterial. We are here for today, today's 24 hours, and tomorrow. We're looking for the future because I always do say a sober today makes for a better tomorrow. So that's what we do over there. But if you notice, both my websites, they start with the word clear, clearviews.info, clearreform.com. That word clear, how it starts, stands for Community Lessons Empower Addiction Recovery. We all are a community, whether it being here, located in Long Island, New York, and wherever you're located, your uh, location you might be in, and even for my viewers that are overseas, we are a community. Some, in some fashion, we're a global community, in some other fashion, we could be a local community. But no matter what, it is our lessons that empower addiction recovery. It's my lessons that I share with you. It could possibly be your lessons that you're going to share with me, but it is. Uh, it comes down to all of us have to share our lessons within uh, our community to help each other to empower us to fight addiction. So like I said, what we are going to talk about today, what the Bible says about alcohol and alcoholism. And I'm going to have to read a lot of this because it's, it's things that I uh, don't memorize. Uh, as always, you can uh, tell when I speak from the heart because that's when I truly memorize things. Let me turn this music down a little bit. Okay, I think that's a little better. Alcoholics can't control their drinking. If you're an alcoholic, you have a compulsive desire to drink. And that is so true because alcoholics think, and this goes back to yesterday, excuse me one second. This goes back to yesterday's uh, video where I spoke about uh, there are two sides to a human's brain. We have the human brain, which is called the cortex. And then we have the midbrain, otherwise known as the booze brain, otherwise aka the devil. Uh, so uh, it is the midbrain, the devil, that w makes us want to think that we cannot live without drinking. And that's far from the truth because we can live without drinking. 
When you drink, your negative personality traits such as anger may be intensified and your problems may seem magnified. Things are just blown way out of proportion. In order to cover up your alcoholism, you may tend to overdo in other areas of your life. Chances are you need a drink at certain times of the day in order to just get going, to face your problems or to even relax. And you may even drink on the job. Of course, this means that your work and efficiency is slacking off. And your home life is probably suffering as well. You are enslaved by the sin of alcoholism. You are enslaved not by the cortex side of your brain, which is the human brain, which is what God gave you. You are actually uh, being taken over by the mid-brain, uh, otherwise known as the booze brain, a.k.a. the devil. Here are some scriptures, and this one comes from Proverbs 28.13. He who conceals his sins does not prosper. But for whoever confesses and renounces them finds mercy. He who conceals his sins does not prosper. But whoever confesses and renounces them finds mercy. That's Proverbs 28.13. Now the, there's about six that I have here. Here's another one. This one comes from James 5.16. Therefore confess your sins for each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of righteous man is powerful and effective that is james 5 16. john 3 17 for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him remember he sacrificed his own son this one is john 4 10 jesus answered her if you knew the gift of god and who it is that asked you for a drink you would have asked him and he would have given it uh, given you living water. Let's read that a little slower because that was Jesus answered her. If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. John 4.10. This is uh, Ephesians 5.18. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to bureaucracy. Instead, be filled with spirit and the last but not least is Proverbs 21. That's 21. Wine is a mocker, and beer a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. So those are verses from the Bible that speak about how the Bible feels about alcohol and alcoholism. But there is hope. If you, are, if you have a drinking problem, you have probably felt condemned by yourself and others, and you know that other people do notice. No matter how much you try to conceal the fact that you are drinking and uh, have an alcohol problem, people do know, because people see signs such as slurring the words, uh, color of your skin, uh, eye movement, uh, moodiness, nippiness. Rather than condemning, however, God emphasizes how to overcome by receiving salvation, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. With these, you will have the ability to become free and stay free of alcohol. This goes back to not only AA, but any, any other method. It's to reach out to your higher power because one will not work. Alcohol uh, addiction recovery plans do not work without the higher power. You need to combine both together. The saying, once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic, is based on the fact that a recovered alcoholic can never go back to drinking in any amount without being controlled by it again. Therefore, you need to ask God to deliver you from the desire to drink at all. Basically, what that means is that uh, you can't, if you're an alcoholic, even touch even in one bottle of it because you are going to have the desire to continue drinking then. So what God pretty much says is just don't drink at all. And, and that is a good plan, and it's a plan that has worked for me since June 22nd, 2013. Practical help. You probably have tried to stop drinking before, and it has not worked for you. You may have tried religion, or may even be a Christian. What you need is practical spiritual help. Seek out a spirit-baptized counselor. Ask him to pray for deliverance for you, especially from compulsiveness, psychological, and physical dependence, and even from desire. <laughs> Excuse me. You may have been told you must stop drinking and never, ever drink again. But the pressure of having to face life without drinking may be overwhelming and something that you don't want to bear or to even handle. 
focus on the present. Decide that you will not have a drink right now. This goes back to the concept of 24 hours at a time. Live one day at a time. Each day has enough trouble on its own. That's Matthew 6, 3, 4. Live one day at a time. That's the 24-hour concept. Each day has enough trouble on its own. This is Romans 12, 2. You need to modify and change your lifestyle. The Bible speaks of being transferred by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12, 2. You can renew your mind through your reading and thinking habits. Bible and devotion, testimony books will be most helpful. Helpful. Dwell on God and His Word rather than on your problem. Learn and follow the principle of praise, honor, and respect to God each time you are tempted to drink. Anytime you lift that bottle or you lift that glass, think of God. Think of how Jesus died for His, for your sins on the cross. Through Jesus, therefore, let us certainly offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess His name. Hebrews 13:15. It is important to change your perspective from yourself to God and from the drink and from the drink to God. Praise God the problem solver rather than the problem. Remember that you can be just as chained to sin by trying not to do it as you are doing it. As long as your intention is on the sin, you are honoring it. But if your attention is on God, you are honoring Him. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith, Hebrews 12, 2. You may, you may have a spouse, a relative, or a friend who is not an alcoholic and wants to help you. He or she may be, need salvation, the baptism of spirit, and the fruit of the spirit for their own sake. They can then better intercede for your deliverance from alcohol. Your close relatives may need to know how to help spiritually in your effort to recover. They should know that openly condemning an alcoholic is not an effective way of handling it. It may just feed your sense of joy, joyous agony because you are getting what you deserve. Jesus came to save, not to condemn. John 3.17 As you pray, if you want to experience God's abundant life, pray the simple prayer. And pray this now. You just say these words, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I know that I am a sinner and need your forgiveness. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and rose from the grave to give me life. I know you are the only God, so now I want to quit disobeying you and start living for you. Let me read that. I know you are the only God, so now I want to quit disobeying you and start living for you. Please forgive me, change my life, and show me how to know you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I'm going to read that again because it's important. Heavenly Father, I come to you in joy, Jesus' name. I know that I am a sinner and need your forgiveness. I believe that you have died on the cross for my sins and rose from the grave to give me life. I know you are the only way to God, so now I want to quit disobeying you and start living for you. Please forgive me, change my life, and show me how to know you. In Jesus' name, amen. Folks, I speak about this all the time. You cannot battle alcoholism or drug addiction without your higher power. These verses, this information, is certain proof. It was writ written in the Bible thousands and thousands of years ago about alcoholism. That's how long it's been around. It is now time for you to do two things. The first thing is to stop denying that you are an alcoholic or you have substance abuse issues. And when you have done that, then you need to reach out to your higher power and ask for guidance and, and uh, direction. Ask your higher power for this prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I know that I'm a sinner and need your forgiveness. I believe that you have died on the cross for my sins and rose from the grave to give me life. I know you are the only God, so now I want to quit disobeying you and start living for you. Please forgive me, change my life, and show me how to know you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's touch on these uh, Bible verses one more time. Proverbs 28, 13. 
he who conceals his sins does not prosper, but whoever confesses and renounces them finds mercy, mercy from God. James 5.16 Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of righteous man is powerful and effective. James 5.16 again. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. John 3.17 John 4.10 Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and, you, and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. John 4.10 Ephesians 5.18 do not get drunk on wine, which leads to a bureaucracy. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Proverbs 21, that's 28-1. Wine is a mocker, beer is a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not a wise person. But there is hope. If you have, been dr if you have a drinking problem, you are probably felt condemned by yourself rather than others. Rather than condemning, however, God emphasizes how to overcome by receiving salvation by baptism of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of Spirit. With these, you will have the ability to become free and stay free of alcohol. The saying, once an alcoholic, always an alcohol, is based on the fact that a recovered alcoholic can never go back to drinking in any amount without being controlled by it again, which is the other side of the brain which is the booze brain which is controlled by the devil therefore you need to ask God to deliver you from the desire to drink at all not even one drop practical help you probably have tried to stop stop drinking before and it has not worked for you many of us have it took me six seven times before I hit rock bottom you may have tried religion or even you may even be a Christian what you need is a practical spiritual help Seek out a spirit-baptized counselor. Ask him to pray for deliverance for you, especially from compulsiveness, psychological and physical dependence, and even from the desire to drink. You may have been told you must stop drinking and never drink again, but the pressure of having to face life without drinking may be overwhelming for you. Focus on the present. Decide that you will not have a drink right now. Live one day at a time. Each day has enough trouble on its own. Matthew 6.34 And that goes to the concept of 24 hours at a time, one day at a time. You need to modify and change your lifestyle. The Bible speaks of being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12-2 You can renew your mind through your reading and thinking habits. The Bible and devotion testimony books will be most helpful. Dwell on God and His Word rather than on your problem. Focus on God. Don't focus on your alcoholism. Learn and follow the principle of praise, honor, and respect to God each time you are tempted to drink. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess His name. Hebrews 13, 15. It is important to change your perspective from yourself to God and from the drink to God. Praise God the problem solver rather than the problem itself. Remember that you can be just as chained to sin by trying not to do it as you are by doing it. But if your intention is on God, you are honoring Him. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author, perfecter of our faith. Hebrews 12.2 You may have a spouse, a relative, a friend who is not an alcoholic and wants to help you. He or she may need salvation themselves. Mm -hmm. The baptism of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit for their own sake. They can then better intercede with your deliverance from alcohol. Your close relatives may need to know how to help you spiritually in your effort to recover. Mm -hmm. They should know that openly condemning an alcoholic is not an effective way to, to help you. It may just feed into your sense of joyous agony because you are getting what you deserve. Jesus came to save, not to condemn. John 3.17 As you pray, and I wanted to do this three times for this particular segment, if you want to experience God's abundant life, pray this simple prayer with me. For the third time. Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. 
I know I am a sinner and need your forgiveness. I believe that you have died on the cross for my sins and rose from the grave to give me life. I know you are the only way to God, so now I want to quit disobeying you and start living for you. Please forgive me. Change my life and show me how to know you. In Jesus' name, amen. And folks, you take these verses and that prayer and walk into your household and start bringing the positive sunshine and the positive life of God and your effective battling of your addiction into your home and start being that role model and start writing those chapters in your book of life, your birth to your death. Those chapters starting September 24th, 2014 should be new chapters if you have decided to do two of two things. That is to accept the fact that you need your higher power to battle your addiction and to battle your addiction you need to finally stop denying that you have an addiction. Do those two things starting today, September 24th, 2014, and you can rewrite or start writing new chapters in your book of life. My book of life started in 1961, and I've said this many times, but for the viewers that haven't heard, it started in 1961. And I'm going to fast forward. Every year is a new chapter. So from 1961 to 1979, that would be a total of 17 chapters or 18 chapters. Those chapters were written between me and my parents. It is my parents' responsibility at that time to be good role models to prepare me for life, to prepare me to start writing my own chapters. In 1979, I took that, the, uh, that book of life and that pen from my parents and held on to it for myself. We'll fast forward from 79, I go into college to 1980. I'm still in college, 1981, into the Marine Corps. I'm sitting in boot camp and a chaplain taps me on the shoulder and asks me to become a lay leader. What is a lay leader? Very, very similar to an addiction recovery coach. It is the liaison between the recruit and the chaplain. An addiction coach is the liaison between the addiction and recovery. Those chapters from 1961 to 79 included my parents helping me, molding me to be the uh, a proper person in life that, that God wanted me to be. From 79 to 81, I already started writing my own chapters, which included alcohol. I've always had the personality and the motivation and the knack to always be there for others, to help others, to comfort others. And God noticed that, and that's why God asked the chaplain to tap me on my shoulder to become a lay leader. However, I was already prepping my own chapters in my book of life which is going to include a lot of alcohol. As the two years go on, you'll see. From 81 till 83, stationed all over the world in the Marine Corps, being a good Marine, uh, but still drinking, drinking heavily. 1983, Beirut, Lebanon, we're stationed there. We have a terrorist attack. We have bombing, 241 Marines were lost. I had a bad accident. I was injured really bad. Uh, but God protected me, he shielded me because he had a better plan for me down the road. Of course, I didn't know that at the time, but I still continue writing my own chapters in my book, which included, again, alcohol. Mind you, my chapters were never bad as a human. They they were stained. Every chapter and every, in, uh, every year and every chapter in my book of life had stains of alcohol on there. So now let's fast forward to 2009. So we were going from 61 to 79. With the help of my parents, they were helping me write those chapters. From 79 to 09, 30 years, yeah, 30 years exactly to, to the year, I started writing my own chapters. Now I'm up in Alaska doing what I've been doing for many years, which is um, in the optical field, helping Eskimos in the Arctic Circle, and I have another accident. Again, God shielded me from certain death. Three years of physical therapy on workman's comp, my uh, alcoholism increased tremendously to the tune of 10 to 15 shots a day of vodka. 2011, God tapped me on the shoulder and wanted me to do again what I started doing in 81. 
which was to be the mediator between older people, handicapped people, uh, physically, uh, financially challenged people, and a recovery plan, which was to help them if they needed things in their home, if they needed repairs done, things as such. However, it all included alcoholism. So God knew in 2011 that I was not ready, but he did not give up on me. In between that now, he saved me twice from certain death, which was in 2009, 1983, and at least two or three possible overdoses. He said to himself, I'm going to let Ralph keep writing his own chapters in his own book. So from 2011 to 2013, my alcohol consumption became uh, somewhat uh, disgusting to the tune, like I said, 10 or 15 shots of vodka a day. June 22nd, 2013, my world collapsed because I hit rock bottom. It is then when I reached up and asked God for guidance and direction. It is then when I decided that enough was enough and I cannot drink anymore because I could not handle my own life. That is when God stepped up to the plate and said, I am going to now help you write the rest of your chapters in your book of life. Those chapters are going to include being my servant. Those chapters are going to include what's to come. And you'll see what's going to happen to you now, Ralph, because you've always had the knack to help people. You've always had the knack to motivate people. So now God kept working in his mysterious ways that he always has, and he introduces me to Dr. Luis Gonzalez from Starting Point. But Dr. Luis Gonzalez and I spoke a few times, and he was impressed on my method of uh, recovery, which was through the camera, into your home. So you hear a voice, you see a face, you see reactions, and you hear mispronounced words, but you see a real alcoholic. You're not reading a book, you see the real deal. So him and I decided, let me become a addiction recovery coach. So I went through his schooling, took the final exam, and became a master addiction recovery coach. It is then where God's plan was completed, because in 1981, he knew that in 2014, what a lay leader did in 81, I would do as an addiction recovery coach, starting in 2014. And he sent me on different missions, missions like the video camera, missions like my websites, missions like last Sunday and the next Sundays to come, walking up and down Neighborhood Road, Master Beach, talking to people that are real. In the beginning of this, you probably heard some of those interviews. Those are real people with real problems and real issues. Those are people that either know the Lord or they don't. And it is my job to help people with their addiction and also make them understand that they cannot fight their addiction without their higher power. So now God has helped me write my own chapters in my book. And as each year goes by until the end of my time, whenever that might be, each chapter will become better. Folks, you have the beginning, your birth, and your end. It is what is in the middle is the most important, but it's mostly important what's at the end of your book, because that is what people are going to remember, and that's where God will look at you mostly. Because what God wants to see is people to change for the better. So if you changed towards your end, and God was part of that, in other words, God lived within your heart, that is how that's going to end up being for you. And it all starts at your home, folks. It starts with God. It starts with your battle addiction. And it starts with you being a role model. If you're in front of your kids and you drink and you smoke and you use profanity and you hit, that is the worst role model uh, figure that you ever want to do. Because what you're creating is you are creating a mini-me. If you're going to smoke, they're going to smoke. If you're going to drink or hit or use profanity, that's exactly what they're going to do. You are a mirror image to them. You are the hero, you are their role model, so if they see you do it, they think it's quite okay for them to do it. So wouldn't it be great today, September 24, 2014, for you to be, have the first day for the rest of your life, the first day of sober rest of your life, because a sober today is a better tomorrow, and the first day of being a good role model. If you absolutely need to smoke, smoke outside. If you need to drink, 
drink away from your home. If you need to use that foul language, do it away from your children. And if you need to abuse another person, you need counseling and therapy. And if you're the victim that's watching me right now, and if you have a person that constantly abuses you, you need to call the authorities. My only analogy would be, it is better for the authorities to take your loved one out in handcuffs and hopefully have them seek some kind of counseling or therapy than for the authorities to take you out in a body bag because a slap here and a punch there will eventually be a knife or a gun. It's that simple. And folks, the role model is the most important thing because your children from birth, of their book of life until about 17, need you to be part of writing it. They cannot write that alone. You want to mold them so when they go into society, to society out when they're 17 or 18, that they are protected from all that is so bad that's out there. But if you're going to smoke and drink and hit and all that good stuff in front of your children, they are going to be so prepared for society because they're going to blend right into it because that's what society is all about. What you want is your kids to go out there and have the full protection, not only of your role leadership, but also of the love of God. That's what you really want. So it all starts at your home. Folks, I always say this and I want to bring this up again. We all go to bed at night and we wear either slippers, shoes, sneakers. And we take them off right before we climb into our bed. And we usually leave them at the edge of our bed. Why not push them tonight for the first night, September 24, 2014, under your bed? That way when you get up in the morning, you will have to go on your knees to go pull them from underneath your bed. And while you're down there, thank the Lord Jesus that you have another day on this earth, that you are here on this earth for a mission. And part of that mission is to fight your addiction daily with your educational knowledge. Part of that program or that pleasure or the honor to have God keep you alive is to be that good role model, to be a good husband, to be a good wife, to be a good human. So tonight... Take your shoes, sneakers, and slippers, put them under your bed. That way tomorrow morning, you will go under there to grab them. And while you're down there, just give a quick prayer to the Lord. You can even utilize this prayer that I just said three times. It would be the fourth time. You could say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I know that I'm a sinner and need your forgiveness. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and rose from the grave to give me life. I know you are the only way to God, so now I want to quit disobeying you and start living for you. Please forgive me, change my life, and show me how to know you. In Jesus' name, Amen. That is what you can do while you're getting your slippers, folks. But it all starts in your home. It starts in your bathroom. You need to eliminate anything that's addictive that's in your medicine cabinet. Just put it in a safe or lock it away somewhere. Because I always say that Mr. Medicine Cabinet is a legal drug dealer in your home because you authorize any drugs to be in there. It is up to you as a parent, as a grandparent, or a legal guardian to monitor whatever is in there. And folks, why not start today, September 24, 2014, to be a more generous person? with your family, with your neighbors, with people in the nursing home, with people in the hospital. Whatever you have extra of, why not share it? When you came to this earth, you came with nothing. And when you leave, you're leaving with nothing. So if you're under the assumption that when the hearse is taking you to your final resting place, that there's going to be a U-Haul truck behind your hearse with your personal possessions, you're dead wrong. No pun intended, but you are dead wrong. Your personal possessions will never leave with you. So why not share it? God shares daily with us. Folks, whether you realize it or not, when you have dinner, when you're watching that 32-inch flat screen TV, that isn't just merely given to you. It is through the power of Christ that everything happens for a reason for you. So why not start sharing? Use the analogy, you'll never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. And if you're ready to do all these things that we just talked about, let's do the two things. Let's first say, Ralph, and I'll say, whoever you are, I do have a problem. I know I have a problem. Do you? And if you do, will you admit it? And if you do, 
Let's make today, September 24, 2014, the best day for the rest of your life. Admit you have a problem. Seek out the prayer that we've said four times now or seek any other prayer. But seek your higher power, no matter which way you go, because you need to have both. Stop denying and seek your higher power. Then you can go to your AA. They have the 30, uh, excuse me, they have the 90-90, which is 90 meetings in 90 days. They have the 12-step program. Very effective organization for millions of people. I did try it. It wasn't active enough for me. As you can tell, I like to be very active. I like to be, I don't want to put it in this, but I want to be in your face. Because you see a face, you hear a voice, you see a real person. And I think one of my interviewees, they said it best the other day. They said, it seems like in AA, it's repeatedly said over and over again the same thing. Folks, we need to mix up our power of uh, communication. My videos are never alike. I mix it up. I do different commercials. I do different interviews. I'm going to have new interviews next Sunday coming up. But I mix it up because you need to make your addiction recovery plan as exciting as possible it's something to look forward to daily not merely reading out of a book you want to make it interesting you can try my methods just go to www.clearviews.info c-l-e-a-r-v-i-e-w-s.info you're going to see tons of videos tons of articles tons of newspaper clippings and uh, there's even a couple games on there You'll uh, actually also see Amazon. They sell uh, books on addiction and alcohol consumption. Buy one of those books. But that's www.clearviews.info. You can go on to Facebook. We have an open group called Clear Reform. Clear, we know what it stands for. Community Lessons in Power, Addiction Recovery. But what is reform? Do you realize that when you, if you say this prayer, that you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you are going to be reformed, transformed into a whole new different person. Well, that's exactly what my coaching does for you. I will take you from addiction to recovery. You will be reformed and transformed into a stronger you. A person that does not need alcohol or drugs and drugs if you do both. You don't need them. That is actually what clear reform stands for, folks. So you can join our uh, open group there. You can also go, we have two pages. We have clearviews.info and clear reform. You can find us on Twitter, Bing, Dig, Dogpile, Yahoo, Google, Blogger. I think I said Twitter already. But you can find us everywhere. But the, the reason I say all these things, it's not to promote myself, but it's to let you know that we are out here for you. Living without alcohol and drugs can be nothing but fun, if you allow it to be, but you cannot merely just say the words. You have to walk to walk and talk to talk. Too many times have I run into people that have contacted me that said they're at the end of their rope and they need help. And they're pretty committed for about a week and then they kind of disappear. Am I criticizing it? Absolutely not, because I've been there and I've done it. They are not ready, but when they are, I promise them, and I promise you, I will be here for them. As long as the Lord Jesus Christ keeps me on this earth, I will be available for help to anyone that's in need. Like when I walk up and down the neighborhood road and do my interviews, I offer pro bono my services. I will not charge my rates as an addiction recovery coach, and why am I doing that? Two reasons. I like to build up my experience on one-on-one. -on -one with people so that's a selfish act of me but the bigger reason is is because I want to be a servant to my Lord I want to show people that their generosity that does exist in some people is more powerful than any money or any uh, any um, materialistic thing I want to show that I can share I can share my knowledge with people for free Will I do that forever? Of course not. Will I do it in the next nine Sundays? Of course I will. For any person that I interview, I had offered 
one hour free service and if it was a combination of two people and only one needed it I would give them the two hours I take from the one hour and yield that one hour to the next person but that's what I'm going to do that is my commitment to God that is my commitment to you and that is my commitment to myself and that's a commitment I will not break so you know the methods if you're one of those people that needs to have uh, supervision because you are afraid of drinking uh, when you're home alone or doing drugs check yourself into a rehab center they have the 30 60 90 day programs they take insurance and Medicaid and if you don't have either one of those go on your state's website see if they offer something and if they still don't offer anything there contact me and I will try to do some research for you You can contact me if you want to not talk to me by telephone but text me 631 599-0218. If you do want to call me, it's 844-405-HELP. Or you can email me at clearreform at yahoo. That's C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M at yahoo.com. We, as a community, will work together in finding something that is uh, suitable for you. I do have contacts for people that are uh, CEOs or presidents of rehab centers. Not to say that I can do anything other than possibly just ask them for uh, guidance on, on how best to suit you for a recovery plan. But everything does require an action plan, folks. Everything that we do in life, it's not just when it comes to our addiction. It comes to how you raise your children, how you run your household, how you drive your car, how you walk the streets. Everything requires an action plan because there are goals that are set. When you get behind the wheel, you have a goal to go somewhere. So what is your action plan to get there? It's to go make a left on Main Street and a right on Smith Street. That's an action plan to reach your goal and then you achieved it. Well, that is the same concept with whatever you do in life. Right down to your own addiction plan. But without an addiction plan or an, a, an action plan in place and the word of God and God within your uh, circle of life, nothing will work for you. You need to include everything. Stop denying and include God. Two simple things and everything else will fall into place. That I can guarantee you. I promise you that. It will all fall into place then. But it all starts in your home. So now you have those three things, those three methods. You have AA, my methods and the treatment center, and there are many, many more. You just look around. It's not to say that you can't do all three at one shot. You can go to the treatment center if it's severe enough. And when you come out, go to AA or come to me or do all three in the same day if you want. Every person has a recovery plan that's best suited for themselves. There is no, no set plan that forces you to do it in any which way. Nobody even heard of clearviews.info because it wasn't existing. I made that up. I made clearviews.info. I created it. And look at us now. Thousands of viewers. I have on one of my websites, I have a globe that turns and every little red dot you see on the globe is somebody watching. And sometimes you'll see flags. Spain, Canada, Germany, Middle East, some people. That's probably the military side of it. But there are people watching globally. And why? Because of people like you that can spread the news that there is hope at the end of the tunnel. There is a light at the end of that tunnel. And there is hope. And here is where it says, is there hope? Question mark. If you have a drinking problem, you have probably left condemned by yourself, felt condemned by yourself and others. Rather than condemning, however, God emphasizes how to overcome by receiving salvation, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and a fruit of spirit. With these, you will have the ability to become free and stay alcohol-free for the rest of your life. The saying, once an alcoholic, is always an alcoholic, is based on the fact that a recovered alcoholic can never go back to drinking any amount without being controlled by it again, and that is the devil controlling you. Therefore, you need to ask God to deliver you from the desire to drink at all. You can say you don't want to drink, but you need your higher power to to. Be that crutch. When God gave you the human brain, the cortex, let that brain do all the thinking. Don't let the bruised brain or the mid brain, otherwise, aka the devil, control you. If you feel that you have an urge to drink or to do drugs, go to your higher power. 
Let your higher power control every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, and every year of your life. You will start seeing changes. I know I have. And people around me that I've grown up with, my own family, that I used to chuckle when they used to tell me, well, we'll have to see. It's in God's plan. We'll let God handle it. I used to chuckle and say, well, how can you be so nonchalant about your builds and and plans? How can God even, like, he can't go and pay your cable bill or do grocery shopping. But now I, I understand the bigger picture is it's not to worry because God, no matter what, will work it out for you. You just have to be a patient human being and let it all fall into God's lap and let Him work it out for you. If you let that happen that way, that's the best thing for you to do. You have to realize that you cannot control your own life because remember the book of life. Remember all those chapters that were so terrible in your book of life? Those were the chapters that you controlled. And if they were terrible, what does that say about you? I'm not saying that's saying that you were bad, but you just couldn't control your life. And that is the reason that you reached out to God. That is the reason you reached out to Him. So, with all that said, what the Bible says about alcohol and alcoholism, what is stopping you from today, September 24, 2014, from doing those two things? Those two things are so simple. Stop denying you have a problem, because you do. Stop denying it and reach out to your higher power and God will be by your side step by step and then you can reach out to people like Dr. Luis Gonzalez from Starting Point. If you want to talk to him, 844-414-8444, that's 844-414-8444. Certainly you can talk to me anytime you want. You can text me at 631-599-0218, you can call me at 844-405-HELP. Email me at clearreform.com. But people are here to help you. We're all here because we all are a community. And it is my lessons that empower your addiction recovery. And it might be your lessons that empower my addiction recovery. But we all have to come together. And that's the bottom line. So one last time I'm going to, because this is an important uh, segment today, I'm going to recap real quickly on what the Bible says about alcohol and alcoholism. And I hope to God when we're done with this video that whatever I have to say sinks in. We're going to end this in a different fashion today. We're going to end it for the fifth time with the prayer. And that will be the end of this segment for today. Let's touch up on this. I'm going to go through these uh, verses quickly. Proverbs 28, 13. He who conceals his sins does not prosper, but whoever confesses and renounces them finds mercy and finds mercy from your Lord. James 5, 16. Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of righteous man is powerful and effective. John 3, 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. John 4, 10. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Ephesians 5.18 Do not get drunk on wine which leads to uh, where's the word now? Uh, uh, debauchery. Instead be filled with the spirit. I'm sorry it was so small. Proverbs 20 Dash one, wine is a mocker, beer is a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not a wise person. We just spoke about the hope and there is hope. Two things, stop denying and start accepting. Folks, practical help. You probably have tried to stop drinking before and it has not worked for you. You may have even tried religion or you might even be a Christian. What you need is a practical spiritual help. Seek a self a spirit baptized counselor ask him to pray for deliverance for you especially from compulsiveness psychological and physical dependence and even from desire to drink at all you need to ask your your close relatives you need, need to ask them and they need to know that to help you spiritually in your effort to recover is only effective if they don't 
criticize your alcoholism because that would only uh, uh, gives you it, it, it'll give you joyous agony to make you want to drink even more and you don't want that folks before we have our final prayer remember the book of life the beginning your birth and the end remember the different methods AA my methods treatment centers or many other methods remember being a good role model Remember to pray tomorrow morning when you get your slipper, sneakers, or shoes on from under your bed while you're on your knees getting them. Say that prayer that we're going to end this video, or say your own prayer. It doesn't matter as long as it comes from your heart. Remember to share with people. You came to this world with nothing, you're going to leave with nothing. So if you think when your hearse, or when the hearse is going down towards your resting place, if if you think for one minute that there's going to be a U-Haul truck with your personal possessions, you're dead wrong. Your possessions will be given away and people might even fight over them. So why not share them? Start sharing with your neighbors, with your family, with people in the church, with people in nursing homes and hospitals. Try to remember everything we spoke about. Most importantly is that book of life that start at your birth and that will end at your death. Make the chapter starting today, September 24th, 2014, be the best chapters of the rest of your life, the ones that God's going to look at most and rejoice every day for another day on this beautiful earth. Let's finish this right now with this final prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I know that I am a sinner and need your forgiveness. I believe that you have died on the cross for my sins and rose from the grave to give me life. I know you are the only way to God, so now I want to quit disobeying you and start living for you. Please forgive me. Change my life and show me how to know you better. In Jesus' name, amen. Folks, have a sober evening and God bless you.